Welcome. Uh, my name is Sarisha Damarapati. I'm part of the Silver Product Management Team, which is um, part of the Fusion Middleware Group in Oracle. Uh, we're here to talk about some of the new features we've introduced in Oracle Silver Suite 2LC. Uh, and one of the features we wanted to, uh, we would like to highlight and talk about is the Era Hospital. We have a very robust Era Hospital in the uh, new C release, where you can do a lot of cool functionalities, such as being able to do bulk recovery and bulk abort on your error messages based on a criteria that you can choose to aggregate them. So you have all these categories based on which you can aggregate your error messages. Um, for example, if you have messages that, have, that you have failed sending because the server is down, you can aggregate by the HTTP host and be able to do a bulk recovery and a bulk abort. We have a very robust search filter. And in addition to that, we also um, tie the recovery into a scheduler, uh, which allows you to do this uh, recovery at a later period in time uh, when you do not have to use up the resources that's taking up current transactions. So you can try to schedule this. We have inbuilt scheduler screens with the Error Hospital where you can tell them when you want to do the recovery. And you can also do a throttling capability on these recovery. So you can say recover every five messages for every minute. So you don't have to um, you know, take up all the resources and, uh, and create a, um, you know, like a Resource, um, resource conflict issues. Um, so you can do, you can throttle it for a later time, and then I mean, sorry, you can schedule it to go uh, to do a recovery at a later time, and be able to throttle it so you can control um, how it uses the resources. So I'm going to show, following this, I'm going to show a, a brief demo on this feature. And while I'm doing the demo, I would also like to take you uh, take a look at the different features that the new features like the dashboards. Um, I'll also walk you through the a little bit of the enterprise scheduler uh, service that we have in 12C and ties into uh, the uh, whole scheduling of error uh, recovery and the bot. And uh, we're going to look at a little bit uh, of the features itself on, um, on the uh, error hospital features like the search capabilities. All right, um, so let's go into the demo. So I'm going to log into my enterprise manager here. You see the WebLogic uh, dashboards. You can either go to the Server Info dashboard from here or from here. I'm going to choose this link. Um, as you can see, we've re, uh, redesigned the dashboards in 12C. Uh, instead of focusing on business as usual, we're trying to highlight the high key areas and key uh, exceptions. So you can get a quick look on a health check on all your systems, how your composites are doing, how your endpoints are doing. On the, um, on the upper left-hand corner here, you have some key configuration area. Tells you a little bit about your environment. It shows you the um, uh, also the default query duration here that you can set. Um, shows you the auto purge, whether it's enabled or disabled, which is a new feature in 12C. Auto purge is a new feature in for 12C customers. Um, uh, it comes as enabled, so it, uh, you can change the uh, any of these configurations by going clicking on this dot icon here and saying um, you know change change the settings. Um, the default query option is the option you will see across uh, various query features here. Um, so here, um, uh, coming to the middle portion, the business transaction falls. Um, you do not see any data populated here for default by default. This is a new feature intentionally done in 12C to improve the responsiveness of your, of your enterprise manager. Any data that's coming from the database is only populated on request. Or by and when I say by request, that's by clicking on this refresh button you see here. So now I'm going to go ahead and do a refresh and see what we have here. So it displays a, a, a bar chart here, bar graph here, which actually has hotspots. So these are the faults that have been generated in the last 24 hours, which is the default query duration. Um, and you can, the, um, the bar graph has hotspots for various um, uh, categories. So you see the red portion, which is the non-recoverable faults. So these are faults that you cannot do, uh, that, that you can't uh, recover. 
The yellow section is for recoverable faults. These are faults that have been created in the last 24 hours that you can go and do uh, a recovery on. And this is what I'm going to use uh, eventually to show the demo that I'm uh, on the Aero Hospital, the recovery bulk recovery feature of Aero Hospital. The green portion of the graph is the uh, shows the messages that have already recovered. Um, so you can either go to the Aero Hospital by clicking on any of these bar graphs, which takes you by default to that um, criteria, or you can click on the Aero Hospital here. Um, now let's take a look at the extreme uh, right here, the search feature. Um, uh, here you have all the default links to some of the very high level uh, recently used searches and instances. Uh, you also have any of your saved searches that you can have here. Uh, you can have, uh, will show up here, the, these will take you directly to the flow instances tab here. Coming to the bottom portion of the dashboard on the extreme left, you have some backlogs or system logs. Um, again, you notice here that the data is not populated by default, uh, by default, and it only gets populated on request when you click on this refresh icon. And it shows you all the uh, messages that are in the queues in the last 24 hours. Uh, the center portion shows, uh, gives you a health check on all your composites and endpoints. Uh, you currently don't see any faults. If there's any faults, you'll sh see a warning sign here, and you can expand that to see which component has failed and be able to debug that. Um, on the extreme right on the bottom portion, you have uh, fault notification alerts. These are notification alerts uh, that you can create, uh, which is a new feature in 12C. Um, and you can tell the notification rules to publish. You can, you can create various uh, rules and cr criteria for those rules uh, based on either the composite that you're trying to monitor, the number of errors in the last one hour or last 24 hours if, to monitor any of your SLAs. And based on that criteria and based on the schedule you have assigned to the notification rule, and uh, they get published to the dashboard or, or any of the other publication channels that you've specified in the rule. Now let's go back um, and le let's take a look at the Aero Hospital tab itself. So like I said, I can either go through these, um, th through the hotspots on this graph or I can go through this uh, tab pages. For now, I'm gonna choose the Aero Hospital tab page here. Uh, again, you notice that the errors are not populated by default. This is the on request feature that I was talking about. This improves the responsiveness of your enterprise manager. So you get control of the enterprise manager as soon as you log in, and then you can determine what information you want to retrieve from your database. Um, on the right hand side is a search palette, which is a, a very robust search palette that we have created. This comes for both the instant, uh, you will see the same search palette in flow instances and for the Aero Hospital. Um, you, uh, you will see some very, uh, it provides some very quick features. Um, you can also, uh, you, you have various options. You can include um, the, uh, the criteria. You can select these fields based on your partition, based on your composite. Uh, you can give various criteria, and once you've specified your search criteria, you can go ahead and save them. So I'm going to go ahead, and this is like a default uh, search that I've done anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that again. Um, and I'm going to say sample video search 2. And when I do a save, it goes, and you can see that here, sample video search 2. So you can see that in the list, and you can use that. You can also, uh, sorry about that, OK. So you can also generate a link out of the search. Uh, it gives you a bookmark URL that you can copy, paste in your emails, and send it to your colleagues and share it with them. So um, that is about the search palette. Let me go back to the dashboard, and I want to show you how the Aero Hospital, uh, it's uh, the bulk recovery in Aero Hospital works. For this, I'm going to uh, go ahead and use uh, go, go navigate to the Aero Hospital from the bar graph. So I'm clicking on the yellow portion of the bar graph, which is the recoverable messages. And you will see that it gets uh, displayed here by a default uh, grouping which is the based on the fault name. Um, so the group by clause here gives you various ways to group the messages. Um, so, uh, and this is very useful if you're trying to recover a certain set of messages, either based on a fault, based on a composite you want to do. Um, so you can group them, and you can then do bulk recovery and bulk uh, abort. Uh, you have the bulk recovery and bulk abort here. Um, and I'll, I'll show you, I'll walk you through that in a bit. 
Um, this is very useful because, for example, in this case, in this demo, what I'm showing you is I'm trying to recover messages that have failed uh, because one of my service bus was down earlier. Um, service bus um, component was down. So I'm going to do a group by HTTP host, and, I'll, and I'm, what I'm going to do is perform a bulk recovery on these messages that have failed. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select that grouping, and you can see that my bulk recovery and uh, bulk abort have now been enabled. So let's go ahead and look at bulk recovery. I'm going to click on bulk recovery. You get this dialog box um, where you have the, uh, it, the batch name. By default, you can change this to mean something. So here I'm going to do a sample video batch recovery. Um, and then uh, and then it says you can specify a start time and an end time. Um, the uh, start time, this, this is for if you want to defer the recovery to a period later in the, um, at a time period where you're not performing too many, when you, you're not having too many transactions that are happening. So this helps you to conserve on your resources and focus um, on the business that's currently being handled and delegate any of these recovery that, that can wait to a later period when you do not have to conflict with the existing resources. Um, so I'm going to do a start at time. It gives you a quick time. So I'm going to set it to about 10 minutes from now. So it's 3, 6 p.m. I'm going to go ahead and do it for 3, 16 p.m. And I'm not going to specify in time right now because I'm going to just let it um, uh, do uh, whatever time it takes. The, uh, I also wanted to show you this feature called the throttling properties. What this does is, uh, in this case, I have very few messages to recover, um, which is not, not that bad. But sometimes you might have, like, if a server has been down for a long, long time, you might have hundreds of messages that you're trying to recover. And you do not want to flood the system by trying to make it recover all the 100 at the same time. So this is where the um, throttling feature comes into picture. So in this case, I have only six. So I'm going to try and say, I want to do, I want to throttle this by trying to recover only two messages, say, for every two minutes so we don't have to wait too, too long. Say, I'm going to go ahead and say two minutes. So what this does is it's going to create a, a job for me um, in the enterprise scheduler service, which is a new component that we have bundled with uh, SOA in the uh, in the 12C release. Um, so the scheduler, the the job goes and sits in the scheduler screens, and I'll show that in a bit. And then it start, it kick starts at say 3:16. We are now at 3:6, so it'll kick start in about 10 minutes. And what it does is it recovers every two messages for um, in every two minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and do the S here so to create the job. So you can see that it has done a bulk recovery job ID. It gives you the job ID. So it gives you a link that allows you to go to the enterprise scheduler from here, which I'm going to do that currently. But we'll talk a little bit more about the enterprise scheduler. So you can see that it goes and sits here. It's waiting for it to start and at 3.16 PM. Um, so we have a little bit time here, I think, um, probably about 10, 12 minutes. So while we're waiting for that, let me talk a little bit about the enterprise scheduler service itself. It's, um, it's, a, uh, it's a service that's been bundled with SOA. It's a very powerful scheduler, has a lot of built-in jobs that you can use with the SOA components. Uh, it ties very uh, into the adapters, the polling adapters, where you can set up schedules. Uh, it has uh, pre-built schedules. Um, that you can associate with the adapters to bring it up and down at any given uh, for a, 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 at certain frequencies. It's also used with error notification rules to um, generate the you know go through the error notification rules. It's also used here with bulk recovery to be able to schedule the recovery to a, a period when it's convenient for the customer and also be able to throttle. Um, so the, the b b job name is here, and it comes and sits here. And I'm going to wait. We'll have to wait a little bit for the job to get kickstarted, um, so I can keep doing a refresh here until we uh, until it starts. Um, but we have a few minutes here, so let's wait for a bit. So I did a refresh, and you can see that the job has been kickstarted now. 
Um, like I said, we did a throttling for every two minutes. It's going to do uh, two. So it did the first job and it succeeded. It's waiting for the next one to kick off, which is two more minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and do a refresh again in a bit. Um, but as you can see that uh, this is the throttling mechanism I was talking about. This allows you to make sure that you do not flood your system with resources. Um, and that way, uh, you know, if you have a lot of messages, like a thousand messages to recover, then you don't try to do all of them to uh, do at the same time, and you have, and you have a resource contention issue on your hands. So um, I've gone ahead and uh, done a refresh at the end of the job. So we c in the interest of time, um, so you can see the job has finished now. And it's gone to the end of it, and you do not have any. Um, it succeeded all the three, so you've recovered every two messages every um, every uh, two minutes, uh, and you can see that by the times, the processing time, and uh, all the start times and the processing times. So let me go back to the dashboard to make sure that the messages have actually recovered. So I'm back here at the Sobo dashboard, and I'm going to do a refresh. And if you remember, um, uh, this, uh, bar, this part of the bar plot was a little more bigger than it is now. But just to make sure, I'm going to go in to that area. And if you remember, we did a group by HTTP, and you got eight of those messages that you had to recover. So you see th those have disappeared now. You only have the 18 other messages um, that are still there that you didn't do any recovery on. But the me eight messages that you actually performed the recovery on have finished, recovered, and you do not have them here anymore. So that's, um, that's the demo for the Aero Hospital. All right, so now you have a look at the demo of the Aero Hospital and the cool feature, including the dashboards and the enterprise uh, scheduler service. I hope you enjoyed the session, and you will uh, go and uh, check out more features in the 12C. Uh, thank you for listening, and uh, go, to our, uh, go to our social media to get more information on our latest products. Thank you.